dear sisters, today I'm going to talk to you about righteous and pure motives for speaking life into our husbands. And that's actually really interesting that you can have unrighteous motive for speaking life into your husband. And I will explain what I mean. But let me start with a couple of scriptures for first. Out of the abundance of our hearts, the mouth speak. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. Matthew 12, verses 34 and 35. A man shall eat good by the, by the fruit of his mouth. Proverbs 13, 2. Who keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from troubles. Proverbs 21, verse 23. My dear sister, one of my greatest desires in my life, and I hope to impart this to you, is to have my heart so full of God's word that when a spiritual attack comes, that's all I speak back. You know, that, that my reaction would be first to answer with the word of God. My first thoughts would be to answer with the word of God. That the word of God would be all that we think and speak. As Kevin always said, I poke you and you bleed the word of God. That there will be no room for anything else in our hearts and minds. We will push it out. The word of God will push everything out. There will be no room for negativity. There will be no room for doubt. There will be no room for anything destructive. So, we want to have so much word of God in us that when we are attacked, we answer back with the words of faith, which please the Lord. Faith is what pleases the Lord. Doubt and unbelief grieve and quench the Holy Spirit. You want your faith to be activated by you proclaiming the truth of God's word. Let me repeat that. You, my dear sister, want your faith and your spirit to be activated, to made active and strong and alive and vibrant by you proclaiming the truth of God's word. You want your faith to be activated. You want your children's faith to be activated. You want your, you want your husband's faith to be activated by you proclaiming the truth of God's word. Biblical confession, the confession of God's word, activates faith. It makes our faith vibrant and makes us believe, <laughs> you know, and neg negativity, words of doubt, they deactivate our faith. We lose faith when we start spewing out negativity. Do not let, my dear sister, do not let your senses be bombarded with natural evidence, you know, your circumstances that everything is bad, you know, I'm feeling, I'm not feeling good, everything is falling apart. Do not let your senses to be bombarded by that natural so-called evidence that makes you doubt the word of God. Do not let your senses to be affected. Stand firm on the rock. When you speak, speak word of faith, you need to have a righteous motive. And that's exactly what I was planning to talk about. When we speak the word of faith, we need to have righteous motives. We know, obviously, that life and death are in the power of our tongues. Can you imagine what a heavy responsibility it is actually to speak that life and death are in the power of the tongue and if we love it we will eat the fruit the, the fruit thereof the underlying reason or motive why we speak the words of blessing the words of faith can sometimes be selfish filled with selfish ambition when we desire abundance or consciously or subconsciously to receive something for our personal gratification for our own selves. So, um, you would, when you do say or do something kind, uh, pronounce a blessing or say a uh, words of blessing, for the, uh, um, not for the sake of your husband, 
to grow in faith and get closer to the Lord or to the Christ. It means that you have bad, inferior motives. You, uh, sometimes we speak something kind to our husbands or to anybody to receive something back, uh, expecting that we will receive something back, something nice back. And this is just one of the ways how our selfishness is expressed. That's an inferior selfish motive. We speak something nice to receive something nice in return. So I hope you're getting the drift here. I hope you're understanding where I'm going with this. And obviously such attitude is manipulation. You're saying something nice or kind, not because you have the highest good of your husband in mind, but because you want nice attitude, nice words, uh, something nice to come back to you. And we all know that this prosperity doctrine, the word of faith movement, speaking things into existence, you know, speaking blessing, you know, constantly over everything, over yourself again and again and again, most of the times, unfortunately, are built on self. They are self-centered to the main degree. Not all of it, obviously, but to the main degree. Because they gratify the flesh through the means of positive confession and nice fluffy words. But, once again, let me repeat this, and I want my dear sister to understand this with your whole being. <laughs> but the reason why we, as true women of God, speak words of faith and a blessing and kind and edifying words that built up into our husbands, the main reason why we do that is to build our husbands in Christ. So they're built up in Christ. To build and strengthen their faith. We are strengthening their faith by when we speak the word of God. And we want to see Christ glorified in them and through them. And, and when they interact with anybody in their lives, we want to see Christ glorified. So they can be used for God's glory and grow to their full potential in Christ. That's what our motives should be. When you speak for positive words into uh, words of faith, in uh, biblical words into your husband's life, you do not do it for your own life's life to get better, for your circumstances to have to change, because that would be an inferior motive. You do not want to speak life for your own life. Let me repeat that. You do not want to speak life for your own life, which is would be which this would be selfish, based on the motive of your own gratification, so that so that you can receive something positive in return later. Once again, I'm concluding true and biblical perspective on speaking life into our husbands would be for the glory of the Lord and for the life of Christ to manifest, to richly manifest in our husband's life, to build them, them in Christ so they can grow in grace and truth. And isn't that what you want, my dear sister? Isn't that what you want? You want your husband to grow, grow in grace and truth, to build him up, uh, to, to, for, them, for him to grow in faith by you building him up in faith by your words that are biblical. You do not really expect your, uh, your life changed or be affected by your kind words, which may obviously come. Of course, this may obviously come. But you have a biblical perspective, perspective which comes from a selfless heart, pure heart, which is um, cultivated in secret, in your secret place. When you pray, when you bathe your husband in prayer, when you bathe yourself in prayer, that's when that selfless heart is cultivated behind the scenes with nobody really sees. And you realize that you're a bond servant or bond slave of Christ, a humble ser servant. And so that selfless, those selfless words come out from a heart that is selfless, obviously. 
One day the Lord will reward you openly with joy, contentment, satisfaction, gratification in, in Christ, which are true riches, and that's what we all want. And those true riches are given to those who are humble in his sight. All these things um, f f far exceed anything that we might desire, any material things that we may, might desire and might receive in the return of the kind things that we do or we say to our husbands. And, my dear sister, I want to encourage you to desire those true riches, not to desire things that you might get for doing something kind to your husband, for saying something nice to your husband. No, desire the true riches, which is peace and love and joy and goodness and kindness and self-control. Desire those true riches. We shall desire the true riches that Christ has to offer. And we need to be concerned for our husbands for the sake of Christ, not even as much for our own sake, or, but for the sake of Christ and Christ's glory. So, my dear sister, this week's assignment, so to say, would be to sit down in your prayer closet with the Lord and to examine your motive, motives of your heart. Why you relate to your husband the way you relate to him? Why do you say uh, the things that you say? How do you say it? Examine what are the effects of your speech. Uh, do they build your husband up or do they tear them down? You do not want to be a woman who tears your own households with her own hands. No. So examine your motives. If they're selfish and sinful and the Lord reveals it to you, confess it, repent, and then pray for the grace of the Lord to fill you up, so to say, with righteous motives for your speech. And I will see you uh, next week, Lord wills. God bless.